So the Dallas Cowboys are an interesting team. Yeah, they're an interesting team. This is a team that I have had number one in my polls a few times that I've heard several people have in their top five, right? As one of the top five best teams in football. And rightfully so. They still have, uh, they're still number one in yards per game. They're still in the top five in rush yards per game. They're still in the top five in pass yards per game, right? And they're third in scoring. This is a legit offense when they're healthy, right? And that's been their problem lately, is health. You know, their top two receivers, CD Lamb and Amari Cooper have been injured, right? Tyron Smith, important to the O-line, injured. They lost Randy Gregory to IR, right? The Cowboys are dealing with injuries, but that's not an excuse because the good teams muscle through. As long as you don't lose your franchise quarterback, you got to muscle through, right? The Buccaneers are going through that. They have six impactful players that are injured right now. You know, uh, AB, Scotty Miller, Rob Gronkowski, Carlton Davis, SMB, right? They have several players, but they muscled through. And to be fair to the Cowboys, they're seven and three, and they're in first place in their division. Okay, so to be fair to them, they have somewhat muscled through. The thing that scares me about the Cowboys, okay, which makes me a little unsure, is that over the last four games, they're 500. And when you look at their schedule, they have one big win against a winning team that's against the Chargers. And we're not sure how elite the Chargers are, right? We're not sure yet. I think they're a good team. I think they're a really good team, but we're not sure. But yet, yeah, it's one win that the Cowboys have over a winning team, right? They lost to the Buccaneers and they lost to KC now, right? So with other quarterbacks and other teams, right, that have franchise quarterbacks, I wouldn't usually hold that against them, right? If we're talking about Aaron Rodgers, it doesn't bother me if, they have one win against the winning team by the end of the year. Or Drew Brees, right? If a Drew Brees-led team had one win against the winning team, it wouldn't bother me. You know, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, it wouldn't bother me because there's history, right? We've seen them perform against high-level teams. When it comes to Dak, that's been the one thing why most people don't want to call him elite is his record against winning teams. So when we look at the Cowboys' schedule, and we see that they have one win against one winning team, you know, it, there's reason to be concerned because Dak doesn't have a good history of this, right? And to be fair to Dak, going into this game against KC, right, his top two receivers were injured, right? Like, everyone's hurt on the Cowboys. Those are the games, right, especially given his history, those are the games you hope, right, that he rises, that he goes off right? That, that, you know, he performs like a quarterback that makes $40 million a year. Those are the games right there. So it is a little cause for concern. The other thing about the Cowboys, right, has been their defense, right? And yes, they've had great games with a lot of turnovers. And Micah Parsons, oh my goodness, right? He has eight sacks on the year. You know, the way he's performing, he could win a defensive player of the year award with the way he's performing, especially over the last three games. They're finally using him as an edge rusher, and he's had a sack in the last three games, right? Consistent three games in a row, right? A sack each and every game. And I like him better when they line him up as an edge rusher. It just seems like it fits him naturally. It fits him naturally. When you look at this entire Cowboy team, though, there's questions, right? There's questions. You're not sure. And it's because of the history. Right? It's because of the history. If I had seen Dak in big games perform at a high level consistently, right? You know, on the high stage in the biggest moments, I wouldn't care about all of this. But given his past situations, right, and his record against winning teams, it does bring up cause for concern. Now, I know quarterbacks do not win and lose games by themselves, but he is being paid $40 million. He's being treated like he's the most important player on that team, right? His paycheck says he's the most important player on that team. His contract says he's the most important player on that team, right? You don't pay someone $40 million if you don't think they're important. The fact he's getting $40 million tells us that the Cowboys feel Dak Prescott is the most important player on this team. The game against KC was a huge letdown. You couldn't ask the Cowboys defense to do any more. They did a good job. Holding Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to 19 points 
if you would have told me before the game that the Cowboys were going to hold the Chiefs to 19 points, I would have said the Cowboys were going to spank them, even without their top two receivers. Does this mean that Dak doesn't take the time to practice with everyone? Because you have to be prepared for these moments. You have to know this is a possibility in the NFL, right? This is one of the reasons why Brady and Peyton Manning were known for working with everyone. They were obsessed. They would work with their third, fourth, fifth, you know, everyone down the line so that when these moments would come, they would be prepared for them. So I don't know if this is a coaching thing, you know, a DAC thing, a cowboy thing or what, or maybe we're overreacting. Like I said, to be fair to the Cowboys, they're seven and three and they're in first place. I will caution Cowboy fans with this, though. I will caution Cowboy fans with this. The Washington football team's starting to play good. The Philadelphia Eagles team is starting to play good, right? Especially the Eagles right now. They're starting to look good. And they're not too far behind. And when I look at Dallas's remaining schedule, right, they have the Raiders, the Saints, Washington twice the Cardinals, Philadelphia, that can get a little iffy. Now, this is a remaining schedule that a $40 million quarterback with a legit team should win. Okay, it doesn't mean he has to win every game, but given where the Cowboys are at right now at seven and three with a $40 million quarterback, those teams I just rattled off, okay, the Raiders, Saints, Washington, New York, Cardinals, and Philadelphia, they're tough games but the Cowboys should be able to win enough of those games to win their division. If something goes wrong and the Cowboys don't win their division, regardless of the injuries, that would be a huge letdown, a major letdown. That is something that should not happen. That absolutely should not happen when you pay your quarterback $40 million and you start your season the way the Dallas Cowboys have. They had a, a, a great start. They've won a lot of games. They've grabbed the attention of, of the entire nation. If something goes wrong, you're going to see Mike McCarthy get fired. And maybe, just maybe, they should make Kellen Moore, you know, the head coach. I, I'm just saying, I like Kellen Moore a lot. I think he's a genius. All, all I'm saying is, where the Cowboys are at right now at seven and three with that remaining schedule with a $40 million quarterback, there is no way they should not win their division. There is no way. It's going to be tough, but they need to win this year. Hey, everyone. Thank you for watching SP Sports today. Please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below. This way you are notified when we post new videos. Also, if you have a moment, leave a comment and check out our other videos.